Okay, so today the scenario is that you want to perform a global alignment of two sequences. So, uh, more common than global alignment is, is a local alignment. So you have, with a local alignment, you're looking for a subsequence within uh, another sequence, normally a longer sequence, uh, or multiple sequences. So you take like uh, BLAST at uh, NCBI or uh, its implementation on Uniprot, and what it does is it looks for uh, spots in its database where a sequence that you enter matches. So it's not trying to uh, do a global alignment and make the whole sequences match. It's just looking for subsequences within those sequences. So this is that's not what we're dealing with today. What we're dealing with today is a less common situation where you absolutely know that uh, two sequences uh, correspond to each other, but you want to calculate their percent identity across the entire stretch of the sequence. So this is called a global alignment. And I'm going to show you how to do it uh, with the bio.align package in BioPath uh, Python. And I'm just going to show you a real simple way of doing it. In, in, in practicality, you would normally do this uh, to develop an uh, identity matrix for multiple sequences. And I'll show you uh, just real quickly uh, one of those identity matrices that I, I formed using a very similar uh, script to this one. But anyway, let's walk through this code and go over uh, what you need to know about this code. So in the, the top of this uh, the script here, I included the link to uh, the, the alignment, uh, bio-align, uh, to where the documentation for a pairwise alignment. So when you're aligning two separate sequences, you're not doing a multiple alignment here, you're doing a global pairwise alignment. So you're aligning just two sequences at a time. Uh, but anyway, that's where you can find the documentation. If you run into any problems, uh, refer to that. Uh, we're going to use a, a specific substitution matrix. So in this case, we're going to use a Blossom 45 matrix. Uh, Blossom 45 would be like if you're trying to compare two sequences that are very distantly related. Uh, so you can use any of these different matrices that are listed here. And uh, I just included them here so you don't have to go search in the web for them. These are the ones that are included in this package. So we could very easily change this to a Blossom 62 matrix by just changing the uh, number here. But anyway, that's what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, set the matrix according to your needs, what, what you know about the sequences that you're comparing. Uh, whenever you create an alignment, you have to, uh, you normally have to introduce gaps in the, the sequences in order to get them to correspond to each other. And there's an initial gap, which would be your gap open, and then you have uh, additional gaps that can be added to that open gap, which would be a gap extend. And those are penalties which you impose uh, for the sequences uh, having to be gapped like that. So that affects the score of the particular alignment. And ultimately, you're looking for the best scoring alignment. So. Uh, in this particular case, I've set the gap open penalty to 3 and the gap extend penalty to 1. So uh, when a gap's open, we're going to deduct 3. And when a gap is extended, after it has been opened, we're going to deduct 1. Or the, the, the algorithm's going to deduct 1. Okay, now we need two sequences to compare. So I've just uh, included these here, seek A and seek B, and I've just entered two sequences that I know uh, roughly correspond to each other. They're, they're homologous sequences. Uh, and then we get into the actual uh, alignment algorithm. So in this case I've called my alignment ALN and then we, we call the pairwise alignment and we uh, begin setting some parameters for it. So uh, pairwise.align.global just tells uh, the, the package to, to use the global alignment algorithm. But once you get to the last two characters after global here, I have a D and an S, okay? The D tells it that we're going to use a distance matrix uh, in this case. So, and the S says that we're going to have a gap extend and a gap, and open, gap open penalty. So, uh, whenever you designate D there, you're going to need 
to put a distance matrix in here. Now we could have put the actual uh, name of the distance matrix in here in uh, quotes, but we uh, defined it up here as matrix and we defined it up there. So we loaded the, the substitution matri matrices up there. Uh, so now we got matrix down here. We have gap open and gap extend, which we also defined up here. Gap open, negative 3. Gap extend, negative 1. And that is going to perform the alignment. So after that's done, we're going to have an alignment, ALN. Now, alignment ALN is not a single alignment. It's multiple, or it can be, multiple uh, equally scoring alignment, equally good scoring in alignments. So... Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to look at, at just the first one. So we're going to look at the first one. That's where this ALN with the index of zero comes in here. And we're defining that alignment. We're calling it stringer. So the reason we're calling it stringer is because we're going to look at it as a, a string uh, later on down the, down the line. And from that string, that stringer, uh, the alignment, we want to calculate the percent identity. So we're going to call that identity. We're going to define it. Uh, and we're going to round it to two decimal places, and we're going to calculate the percent identity by counting the number of pipes in the alignment. So if we skip ahead a little bit and we look at the alignment down here, so this is the top alignment, the pipes actually show uh, identities. So that's going to tell us the number of identities. And in order to count or in order to calculate the identity, we need to know the number of identities and how long the sequence is. So we divide the number of identical uh, residues by the length of the sequence, multiply that times 100, and that gives us the percent identity. And we're going to report that to two decimal places. So you can see right here uh, that for this particular alignment, it calculates to 47.19% identity. And then at that point, we just use the print command, and we print the identity. We print the stringer here. And then I also have it printing the next best alignment, the second alignment that scores uh, equally well to the first one. So uh, you can see here that uh, this is the, the top alignment is gapped differently than the second alignment, uh, mostly at the ends or at the, the start. Uh, the, the, in, internally, it's, it's gapped pretty much the same, and even at the end of it, it's gapped pretty much the same. But it differs here in how it started. So it's really not that significant. Uh, and then, so so what, what I did here uh, is also wanted to show you that you can get the length of the alignment by doing this print alignment zero, ALN zero, index zero, dot end. So that tells you the end of the alignment. Now, if you wanted to get the beginning of the alignment, you could do start on that, which is really not... Uh, informative with a global alignment because uh, they're all going to start at zero. But let's just do that so that you see what I'm talking about here. So now that we've run that, you can see that the alignment starts at zero. And it wouldn't matter if we change that to the fifth if there is five alignments in this particular alignment. Let's see. If we change it to the fifth alignment, it's still zero. It's always going to be zero. So this is how you perform a global uh, sequence alignment of two sequences. And I hope this helps you out. Uh, we, I told you earlier that I'd show you a uh, identity matrix formed with a, a very similar algorithm as this one. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much identical with the exception of that uh, it's performed on an entire uh, FASTA file of multiple sequences. So uh, that... Uh, would, would has been performed here uh, and this is the uh, heat, map, heat map of the identity matrix for uh, that particular comparison. So in this case I'm comparing 54 different sequences uh, and I'm producing a heat map that shows the percent identity between uh, each pair of those sequences. So that's how you perform a pairwise uh, global alignment of two sequences. Uh, here's the code again in case you need to take a look at it. And I hope this helps you out and I, I hope it uh, gets you a little further down the line.
if you liked the video, uh, please like it on, on YouTube. Uh, and also please uh, subscribe and uh, suggest that other people subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.